How many here, you have an older brother, older brothers. Okay, good, okay. You'll know what I'm talking about. And Honet, you know what I'm talking about. See, older brothers are really weird because they will beat you up at home and defend you at school. It's so confusing. <laughs> It's so confusing. Don't give you the time of day at home, but at school, they're your best buddy. There was this kid in seventh grade. He was six foot tall in seventh grade, and he had the habit of bullying one of the special needs kids in our PE class, and it just drove me absolutely nuts. And, and I was way smaller, really scrawny, and one day I had enough, and I did that thing they tell you to do with bullies. They say, if you'll confront a bully and like put them in their place once, they're all cowards, and they'll back over, and then it ends it, right? Guess what? Doesn't always work. I stood up this six foot guy, he was bullying this special needs kid, and I just took a big swipe at him, I missed, and he just leaned in and said, in the locker room after class, you're dead. <laughs> Get in that locker room, I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe the last day, the last hour of my life I played dodgeball, I can't believe this. <laughs> He's backing me into a corner, I'm petrified, and then all of a sudden, right in the middle of it, I found my courage. I stepped into him. I held my ground. I knew that day I would not be hit and he would be pummeled. See, what he didn't know is that my brother had heard the whole thing come into the locker room and was standing right behind him. <laughs> my brother's just standing back there going, this is going to be fun, beating up a seventh grader. Man, I'm, telling you, I'm not going to tell you exactly what happened. I'll just say I didn't get touched and I'll not describe what happened to him because I don't know what the statue of limitations are. But my brother defended me that day. Friends, you are called to courage. And the courage is not something that you can produce or even need to produce. The courage that you walk in day to day is not about who you are, but who is in you. Amen. You are defended more vigorously and more potently than you can ever ask or imagine. The Holy Spirit fights for you. Paul looks at Timothy and says, man, wake up, light a fire of confidence and turn that confidence into a call to courage, my friend, a call to stand up for Jesus and for me and to embrace the suffering around you, a call to courage because of who is in you and who is behind you and who defends you. Verse seven says this, the spirit of God gives us power and devotion and discipline. So because the spirit of God gives us things, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or me as prisoner, but join with me in suffering. Here's what he's not saying. He's not saying, hey, defend me, dude, because I've been your good friend. Defend me because I'm an apostle. Didn't you read that at the beginning of the letter? Defend you, know, I've been defending you. Paul didn't say any of that. He says, the spirit of God is in you. Step up and walk in courage for Jesus, for me, and even in suffering. And Paul's not saying here, embrace suffering for the sake of suffering. Suffering doesn't make you holy. All sorts of people suffer apart from the Holy Spirit and get worse. He's saying, when suffering's in front of you, when the challenge is in your family, in your job, in your workplace, in your relationships, in your class, when you've got a bully, when you've got a, a, a problem so complex you don't know what to do, he's saying because the Holy Spirit's in you, you don't have to go around it and you don't have to stay in paralysis. You can walk into that suffering and God will give you the courage and confidence to get through it. Amen. That's what he's saying. He's saying don't avoid it. Get to it because right behind you, is the Holy Spirit. 